Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Premier League review. Well overdue, we had two crazy weekends with some midweek fixtures in there as well. Boy, 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 boy. Uh, many things seem decided, but maybe, just maybe, there could things be happening. Let's look up top. Arsenal, after being completely walloped by City, put in probably the two most impressive performances of the season. It's easier to play when there's nothing on the line, I guess. Uh, but the wins over Chelsea, especially the one in Newcastle, was really, really impressive. And maybe, just maybe, Arsenal could get back into it, but it would need City to drop five points, which I just don't see happening. But hey, it could happen. Champions League spots. It looked like that United and Newcastle are kind of set on those two final spots and then they both keep losing and especially on this past weekend with Liverpool getting uh, two rather, you know, <laughs> nondescript wins but suddenly Liverpool are in the conversation with games, uh, with, uh, with a game more but they're back in the conversation and do we get a repeat from the uh, 2021 season where Liverpool looked like down and out and coming back? So maybe, maybe, maybe. But I think the biggest story is, of course, on the bottom in the relegation fight where Southampton, yes, they are more or less gone. I mean, uh, three games ago, eight points behind. It's not going to happen. However, yesterday was such a mad day in terms of rele relegation results. I mean, first of all, it was uh, the most goal scoring day I think in Premier League history single day in Premier League history uh, with we, what did we have? we had to have 5-1 Everton away to Brent, uh, to uh, Brighton what a crazy that came out of absolutely nowhere because Bri uh, Brighton have been flying being on two wins in a row and then uh, you lose that badly. We had then a Fulham 5-3 over Leicester. And then uh, to top it off, um, Forest 4-3 four, uh, over Southampton. Meaning that Leicester look in pretty rough shape. We have Everton and um, Forest potentially surviving. And then I have not even mentioned the big story that Sam Allardyce is back at Leeds. Not back at Leeds, but he's now at Leeds. Um... Doesn't look good for them either, Honest, honestly. Yes, it was a credible result uh, that you got at City, but I don't think it will just work out. So much to talk about. I think we should get started. Uh, the past weekend started out with a, a real crazy 4-3 between Palace and West Ham, where Suche gave West Ham the lead. But however, Palace then scored three unanswered through Ayu Zaha and Schlup before Antonio, before the half, pulls one back in. So a really, really open half. However, as a penalty seemingly sells the game and Aguirre just puts one back. Uh, it was maybe in there, but I think overall Palace are the best, were the better team. And again, Palace, a team that barely could score earlier this year, now is scoring uh, four against West Ham and have been scoring goals left and right. Um, we had a Brentford getting a 2-1 win over Forest. Uh, Brighton completely steamrolling Wolves. A Wolves team that actually is not in that bad of a shape. I mean, there's a reason why they're up there uh, on, on the background. Um, I th honestly think the game that broke Leeds, and yes, this was the game that then had Sam Allardyce coming in. I honestly don't think it's gone, gonna work. This is the game that broke them. Losing forward at Bournemouth, you needed to get something there because that was one of your more winnable games. Uh, but if you're down on the 24th minute through two Lorma goals, already 2 0. Bamford's goal didn't help much, and Solanke and a uh, late uh, Semenyo um, goal. Sadly, it, uh, it looks really, really dark for Leeds. Uh, Fulham um, get an equalizer after Haaland scored. And I think this is the goal where he broke now the record. Um, Vinicius equalizes. And then uh, um, Julian Alvarez uh, gets the winner. Aren't you lucky if you have a front line of Haaland and Alvarez? Uh, it's just, it's just, a, it feels a little bit unfair. Uh, credible a win also for United over Villa. Um, a Villa team that can be great, but as of late, the results are not turning up as well. Um, Newcastle, three more South Island, but uh, the craziest game is really Liverpool against Spurs. I remember I looked at it while I was at the uh, stadium in uh, watching a last play Klang Klang, but I think I saw it was 3-0 at the half, and I looked closer. 
third, fifth, fifteenth. This was absolute demolition. This was Spurs like going up to Newcastle uh, and being a th chased off the park. However, they came back with a Harry Kane uh, get, getting one back just before the half. And then this was a game. There were many chances. I think Spurs hit twice the post. Um, Liverpool actually got a little, little, little bit nervous and Son uh, pulls back 3-2. And then in stoppage time, Richarlison gets the equalizer. Only to be down uh, by Diogo Jota a minute later getting the winner. Brilliant game, crazy game. Unfortunately, I could not see it live, but in our stadium experience for me uh, at this moment uh, supersedes war, war, watching a great game. And we're still talking only about Jurgen Klopp uh, going absolutely mental after the, the, the win over the referee. And as much sympathy as I have for, uh, for Klopp, these are things that he doesn't need to do. And these are things that he has been doing even in, during his Dortmund days. That he just picks up fights against the referee and then he, this whole thing he said something completely unacceptable uh, un, unacceptable to me um and th th you know then you think he got insulted no it was not he, he just said he wanted to give you a red but the assistant said give him just a yellow it's ridiculous i think he should be banned for the rest of the season for this behavior because you just cannot have this especially uh yes Paul Tierney, although I think he looks like in in the he's exactly the opposite in terms of refereeing. To him. He's not a great ref referee, but picking a fight against the referee is just so low class. In in a way, you don't really have to do that. And then you know, I usually boycott Monday games, but and I came to rule it this week and the past week. Um, but you know, I cannot watch every day. So for me, Mondays and Fridays are usually days kind of off. But that was an entertaining 2-2 draw between Leicester and uh, Everton. Relegation uh, scrap? Not really. This was open-ended uh, left and right. Kevin Lewin giving Everton a lead. But then Suyunchi and Vardy turning the game around. And uh, if Madison converts the penalty in stoppage time, I think Leicester are going to win this one. It would have been a huge shot in the arm for them. However, Iwobi pulls Everton back. And then it was really a back-and-forth affair uh, with Either side could, uh, could, could have found the winner. In the end, it's a 2-2. Probably helping a little bit more Ever Everton. And that ma uh, that penalty miss by Madison is definitely one that they will rue. And I already said it in the opener. Um, Arsenal's 3-1 over Chelsea. I mean, 3-1 doesn't tell, even tell half to have, have the story. Uh, Odegaard opens the scoring. Assist by Shaka, second goal in the 31st. Also in the 34th, Gabriel Jesus makes it 3-0. And there was no Chelsea on the park. This was just going left and right. All Chelsea, Chelsea uh, all Arsenal, Arsenal, Ar Arsenal. Even to the to, to, to point that the commentator here uh, on German TV was... Um, Kind of joking and uh, look, looking at the goal difference between uh, CSC and Ar Arsenal. Maybe Arsenal can make this up tonight the way Chelsea are playing. And even after the half, I think it was a miracle that Arsenal did, didn't score. And then it's Madueke who pulls one back for Chelsea. Uh, and then the game settles. But honestly, utter destruction. This was not a score that was representing the, uh, the game. I think if this was a 6 1, this would have been more like this um we had liverpool getting a scrappy one nil over fulham in midweek um i think it was a Salah penalty who gave them uh the win all hope that maybe city might stumble against west ham because it was nil nil at the half no nathan ake uh, quickly makes it one nil from there on then Haaland scores and this was the record breaker now now 35 goals now he's he 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 has broken the Premier League record again. Football didn't start in '92, but okay. And Phil Foden uh, makes it three 0 and then Brighton get a win against United. This time penalties fall their way, you know, uh, after losing on penalties to United in the FA Cup Cup final at the McAllister penalty deep, 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 deep into stoppage time. That gives them a win and seemingly setting Brighton on a very good uh, course. For European spots, potentially even Champions League, if it wasn't for the results coming on this weekend. First of first, Chelsea are not getting relegated. They really look bad at our Arsenal. Suddenly they get a win at Bournemouth, out of nowhere, and they can win. Frank Lampard can win games. This was his first win in a long, 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 long time. 
and Chelsea fans were even uh, chanting, we are staying up, we are staying up. <laughs> hilarious, absolutely hi hi hilarious. But Conor Gallagher, but Rashid and Joao Felix are the goal scorers with uh, Sterling Egg actually getting assist in there. We know that Chelsea is a major rebuilding job. Um, let's see who will be the new manager, if it's really Pochettino. Um, there is a whole lot to do at Chelsea uh, to get that squad going up there again. It's a very valuable squad. And yes, I actually would say that Todd Bowley should not speak in public uh, again about Chelsea because uh, his comments during the week were just ridiculous. Um, on Sam Allardyce's debut, uh, City win over Leeds 2-1. The goals through Gundogan in the first half, both assisted by Mares. Set them well in the way. It was one way, tra one way traffic, and it could have been decided when the 84th minute Gunduan would convert the penalty, but he puts it on the post, which caused them Pep to go a little bit ballistic because Holland gave Gunduan the, uh, the penalty uh, to get a hat trick because he's such a nice guy. But you have to kill, kill the game because a minute later Rodrigo uh, makes it 2-1 and then with a little bit of bad luck it could have been 2-2. Totally undeserved result but it would have been. Yes, it was a better showing by Leeds but they still they had no chance in this game. Uh, a rather rough 1-0 for Spurs against Critical Spurs. I think Harry Kane scored that one. Wolves over Aston Villa, Midlands Derby. Um, Aston Villa are kind of a little bit in a rough spot at the moment. They looked so, so, so good just a month ago at the moment and they're not getting results. They're not going anywhere in Europe. They're just in the mid-table. Liverpool also getting 1-0 uh, over Brentford. Overall deserved. Brentford had a few chances. I thought that the goal was nice to play because Salah gets the ball. Then the ball goes deep. Van Dijk uh, plays it over to Salah who from a very short distance First um, um, has mistouches it and then uh, puts it in the net. Um, I thought it was a little bit of a high foot, but I guess this is never called in England. Um, in the end, deserve it win, uh, but not convincing by any means. Convincing though is what Newcastle and Arsenal of showed, especially Arsenal. The first 10 minutes were all Newcastle. Newcastle was all over. Arsenal. It was almost Blitzkrieg style. Uh, it, always, it was very reason what Newcastle was doing to Spurs. However, they got a little bit too hung up on that missed penalty. Uh, you know, there was a, a call for a hands pen, 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 penalty that was not, not given. They got very much emotional and then basically on uh, the, the reverse of that, Georgina plays over to Odegaard who takes a long range shot. It's 1-0 Arsenal. Totally against the run, the run of play, but then Arsenal could settle that. That game played very, very uh, mature. Took then the strength of Newcastle away. And in the end, uh, uh, after uh, Martinelli run, Shea puts it into his own net. And it's a 2-0 win for Arsenal. Very routine win, very mature win. Definitely showing that Arsenal are still a step above Newcastle and are for sure the second best team in the country. It's just that they're not the best team. And then in the evening we had... Uh, actually, really good West Ham performance against uh, Manchester Chelsea United, where uh, Robert Fingers the Hair let in a goal by Ben Rachma that never, never should have let, 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 let in. I mean, he, he's setting himself right, doesn't get his hand, hand on it, but it was not a great shot. It was more or less a, a pass, if you would like. That's 1 0 for West Ham. I think the score on Scholl should have been higher because, especially in the second half, West Ham had many chances to make this a much more convincing scoreline than uh, what they got. But it's a big win that also sets West Ham kind of a little bit, um, calms the nerves. Relegation is not a other problem, although it gives you a boost for the Europa Conference League where you have to play RZ next. And then yesterday happened. Where this was coming from, I mean, I had a brief thought of watching one or two of these games, but you know, I, I again, I wanted to do some other stuff as well. Um, yeah, I missed out big time. The Fulham Leicester goal in 5-3 is also very deceiving because Fulham was all over Leicester. Uh, they had a 3-0 halftime lead. Uh, Villian scoring uh, two goals, the first and the fifth for Fulham. The, the fifth was a really nice goal. Even, even in the fourth one, didn't mind. Carlos Vinicius, uh, Kearney, it was 4-0. When Harvey Barnes pulls one back, then Jamie Vardy misses a penalty. Or a pen I think it was a safe penalty. Again, nah, this was a miss. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember <laughs> anymore. But even then, uh, you felt it's not coming really back. And even when uh, Madison then converts a penalty to make it 5-5-2, five, five, 
and it is 5-3. Everyone knew that this is all Fulham winning and this was one that Leicester needed because Fulham is not going any, anywhere. Their CC is done, they are cruising and Leicester really, really need the points and they have been unbeaten but they didn't show up and that's a really, really bad sign. Leicester are in bad trouble. The score for Brighton against Everton is also one um, that is completely deceiving of how the game went because uh, Everton, I think, had only 22% of the ball. Yes, you do not have possession to be good, but they were ruthless in front of goal. Yes, it helps in the first minute that Ducouré scores uh, the goal to kind of uh, really force Brighton to come, come forward and he scores um, a, sec a second goal on one with uh, McNeil as assisting and then uh, steal own goal. 3-0 at the half for Everton. It must have felt great for Everton because this is, again, a result that came a little bit out, out of nowhere. Although they had a good showing at Leicester already. Uh, Brighton really tried to get back, but McNeil scores another one. Uh, McAllister pulls for back in the 79th and then McNeil scores the double. A absolute weird game, but a counter-attacking football of the highest order from Ever Everton. Big shot of the shots on the arm for them. Maybe they can do some uh, further damage. And then Forrest more or less relegates Southampton. Avani getting two early goals, but it was always that uh, Southampton kept coming back. Alcaraz uh, cuts it in half and it gives white penalty, makes it 3-1. Seemingly it's safe. Just after the half, Lianco, 3-2. Uh, when Danilo scores in the 73rd to make it 4-2, yeah. But then Ward Prowse converts a penalty. It's 4-3 uh, after a uh, Felipe goal was disallowed for offside. So while Forrest probably uh, have won this game and deservedly won the, 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 this game, scoring four, which they barely have done, it also shows some frailties on, on the back. Still, there are also three points that cannot be taken from them. And those are three points that probably could ensure survival. Because if you look here now, let's start on the bottom. Forest and uh, Forest are three clear of the relegation spots. Everton are two clear. Everton have a really sweet run in. I think that Leicester and Leeds United have much tougher games come coming up than uh, Forest and Everton. So this uh, goes in their favor. So it seems like this last, the bottom three are kind of set in stone. But I don't know. Maybe Forest could be dragged back in. But I think this was an important win for them. Uh, let's go a little bit higher. Chelsea will not get relegated. I also said that West Ham are out of trouble. It looks like it uh, most likely. When we look now into European spots, uh, Brighton hang on to the Conference League spot. Uh, then we have Spurs. They will not threat for anything as they probably will have to hold on to uh, this sixth spot. If Brighton win their games, which are not winnable, not necessarily winnable because, because Newcastle and against, against Manchester City. Um, it might, uh, they could leapfrog Spurs at the moment, but that loss now really, really hurt their chances. Liverpool is only a point behind United, but United have a game in hand. So take that for for, for is I think Newcastle looked the safest of all of, of them and the top two are set and it's only 14% chance that Arsenal will make it. Uh, again, expected standings tell more. If you look at the green shadings at the side, more or less tell the same story and that Spurs are now expected to finish ahead of Brighton. Uh, probably on, on the bottom that Everton is ahead of um, Forest and then Leicester and Leeds are really the two teams that look the worst. Let's look at the upcoming games. We have a full round next week um, where uh, let's uh, look at a few games. We have, I think, Everton against Man Manchester City, which suddenly could become an interesting one. Arsenal against Brighton also seems like an interesting game uh, there. Leeds have to play Newcastle, so he, 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 he. Forest uh, have to go to Chelsea. That could potentially be a win, but you never know. And Leicester have to play Liverpool, so um, not easy. Then we have a uh, makeup game with Newcastle and Brighton. That uh, will be interesting. Same day the Milan Dirt is played, so I'm not gonna watch that one uh, unless it's already decided in one uh, in a neg negative way. And then we have a big name fake fixture the week after, where after which I may do the next next video. I, ha I have not decided yet on my schedule there. City against Chelsea, however, it doesn't do any anything. Uh, let's look again relegation with Wolves, Everton. We have West Ham, Leeds. Uh, potentially West Ham already through, so Leeds could potentially get something there. Leicester have to play Newcastle. Uh, yeah, it is rough, and Forest have to play Ar 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 Arsenal. 
it's really hard to see any of the relegation threatened teams to picking up many points and if it is more on the Everton um, Forest side but then again relegation what any what it showed is that in relegation crazy results can happen because no one saw Everton win at Brighton that's it from me from the Premier League. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything to what happened uh, this past two, two, two weeks. Who do you think will go down uh, and who will make it to Europe uh, or in the Champions League? That will, will, will be interesting. Is the title race still open? Questions, questions, questions. In any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.